there everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I'm Brian. This is 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And on this episode of 3B TV, I want to talk to you about the cost of raising real food. Um, this is something I've really been thinking about a lot over the last couple of weeks. It's something that I've considered over the last several months, maybe year, but really in detail over the last couple of weeks as I've been running the numbers after we processed our um, meat birds. Now, if you followed our channel at all, you realize that um, we just did our first batch ever of meat birds here on the homestead. And I've been going through doing the numbers, how much it cost us to raise them as I've been looking forward to the fall and thinking about whether or not it makes sense for me to offer them up for sale to other people. And as I was in the midst of wrestling with that and kind of running those numbers and trying to understand what our direct costs were, our labor costs, and all of those kinds of things, uh, a friend of mine who runs a farm in the next town over posted a link to a blog um, of a farmer in Oregon who is wrestling with the same ideas. And I'll link to that blog post below. What was very interesting to me is that their numbers were very similar, not exactly the same because their management practices are a little bit different and their feed costs are a little bit different, but by and large it was the same or very similar to what I was seeing um, and they were really wrestling with a lot of the same things I've been wrestling with. The fact of the matter is it costs to raise real food. It really does. And it really costs in two different ways. First of all, when we think of cost, we think of the monetary cost. And it is not cheap to raise real food. Now, you can do things more cost effectively depending on your situation, but by and large, it is not a cheap proposition to raise real food. And I think a lot of times we go to the grocery store, we see the prices of meat, we'll just use that as an example, in the grocery store, and everything is just so skewed because the the meat that we see in the grocery store is meat that's been heavily go government subsidized um, it's been raised in in practices that probably most of us wouldn't feel comfortable with if we were to actually see them um, animals crowded in tight spaces not necessarily fed the best of of feed uh, and then the way that they're processed many times isn't something that most of us would find palatable. Um, the only reason why that we are kind of acceptant, accepting of it, I think, is because we've been so removed from the food supply that we have really no clue um, as, as far as what is, is going on. And, and so when you start raising real food, um, and you start really paying attention to the dollars and cents, you really start understanding that it is not cheap to raise real food in a responsible, sustainable manner. That's just the reality of the fact. Um, again, those of you who have watched our channel for a while uh, may recall how I've shared with you that um, Bonnie and I did not set out to be homesteaders. Um, it, we didn't set out to be farmers. Um, this is something that's kind of, to a certain extent, ha happened organically over time, but also it's something that for us has just always been a way of life. Um, both of our families uh, at various times in their lives, in, in our lives and in kind of different approaches, but have raised large gardens, have canned, have raised animals for meat um, and chickens for eggs. And so for us, the whole homesteading lifestyle really has been that, a lifestyle. Um, in fact, as I've shared before, it really wasn't up until about a year ago when I, uh, when we got our American guinea hogs and I started looking for YouTube videos on that, that it really led me to put a name uh, 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 to, to what we were doing um, and that we were homesteaders. Um, I never really had considered that. And I, I raise all of that, or I say all of that, because as we've been raising chickens for about 10 years now, over 10 years since we moved back to the States, 
been doing a garden um, for for that long, putting up our uh, you know preserving meat, um, preserving vegetables, canning, freezing, all of those kinds of things. It really wasn't until about four or five years ago where I really. I, I really saw how much it costs to raise real food and and that happened because some friends of ours asked us to raise a batch of chickens for them um, and I told them I said I have no idea how much this is gonna cost I have never kept track of feed costs because and in in cost in general because for us it was always just a matter of in the spring you get the seed catalogs you order your seed you get the chicken catalogs you order your chickens your chickens come uh, you know, you put together your brooder, you buy your starter, then you buy your grower, and then you buy your your layer. And once your pullets start laying, you dress off your hens, and you know, you plant your garden, you buy your transplants. And I mean, it was just again, it was a way of life. Um, we didn't look at it from the standpoint of dollars and cents, how much we were putting into it. It was just a, a way of life. And so those friends approached me about raising some chickens, and so I said, sure, I'll do it. And so that really was the first time when I actually saw from a financial perspective, how much it costs to raise real food. Now, it was a total debacle. I did everything wrong. I bought standard breed roosters. It took forever for them to grow to market weight. Um, thankfully, my friends were very gracious to me. We're still friends to this day. But it, it just, um, it was a, an eye opener to me from the standpoint of how much it cost financially to actually raise real food. Um, in fact, it cost so much to do those standard breed birds that I said, I'm not doing meat birds again. Uh, and uh, so we went back to the way of doing things where we dress off our hens at the end of each, th the next year when our pullets start laying and use those for meat. And it wasn't until this year that I actually considered and followed through on raising the Cornish cross um, as a meat bird. And it definitely was far more cost effective to do that. But beyond the financial cost of, of what it takes to actually raise real food, there's another cost I think that many times gets forgotten. And that is the amount of time and effort and blood, sweat and tears that we have invested in this. And obviously the cost to the animal to be able to feed us, whether it's you know the chickens as they lay eggs or as they give their lives to become meat for our table, um, there's that cost that I think a lot of times gets lost in the shuffle. One of the things that, I don't want to say it annoys me, but it, it's a term that I don't like very much, and that's when people refer to me as a hobby farmer. Um, for sure, I don't do this for a living. I don't do this as my day job. Um, I'm a small scale guy. But this is far from a hobby. I don't do this, uh, you know, a hobby is something you can do if you want to do it, if you don't want to do it, you don't do it. You know, let's use golf as an example. If you want to go golfing, you go golfing. If it's raining, eh, you don't go. Um, maybe if it's uh, too hot, you don't go. I, I don't know. I'm not a golfer, but it's, it's a, that's a hobby. You can do it if you want. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Um, maybe you, you throw your back out so you don't golf for a few weeks. That's not the way it is when you're farming. When you're raising animals, if I'm sick, I still have to go feed my animals. If it's snowing, I still got to go feed my animals. If it's raining, I still got to go feed my animals. If I want to go on vacation, I've got to find somebody to take care of my animals. Um, it's not a hobby, and so it really, really irritates me when people refer to me as a hobby farmer or what we're doing as hobby farming because it's not a hobby. To me, it's a lifestyle. And there is a cost, there's a commitment that you have to have to doing this. Um, and sometimes, quite frankly, you run out of steam. There are times when I don't want to get up and feed the pigs. There are times when I don't want to go out and weed the garden. Uh, there are times when we have produce and I don't want to put another load in the canner. Um, you kind of just run out of steam and so you kind of have to power through that. You have to have that commitment. And there's that cost to you from the standpoint of time, effort, energy, literally blood, sweat, and tears that you put into this. But there's also a huge payback because when you sit down to a meal and on your table uh, is a salad that you've planted, you've harvested, uh, 
meat that you've raised from from a young age and and you know that that animal died as well as it lived it's extremely satisfying and I think there's also a sense to where you appreciate there's a there's an appreciation that you have for your food um, and you don't take your food for granted um, because you know what went into it from the standpoint of money it's not cheap but you also know what went into it from the standpoint of the commitment and the blood sweat and tears that you've poured into putting that food on the table and so yes definitely there is a real cost to raising real food yeah you know, I was watching a video yesterday uh, from Justin Rhodes where he was talking about how he was getting tired of the chicken chores in particular meeting uh, moving the meat chickens and uh, I think all of us have been there um, where we just feel overwhelmed by everything we've got going on and we just want to uh, kind of throw in the towel um, because again raising real food there's a real cost to it and so don't sell yourself short if you're a homesteader if you're maybe you've just got a small garden maybe you're doing animals um, whatever it is but keep in mind that what you're doing is important what you're doing has value and don't let anybody um, try to take that away from you you know a lot of times and, and this is something again that I'm really struggling with right now as I'm thinking about uh, do I go ahead and offer up chickens for sale in the fall I want to be fair to my family I want to be fair to myself and value the time and the effort the cost the commitment that uh, we have into raising real food and not sell myself not sell ourselves short um, because raising real food, there's a real cost to it. And uh, it's not cheap, but it's oh so satisfying. And I'm so glad to be doing it. And so uh, those are my rambling thoughts as I've been wrestling with this uh, kind of idea, these ideas as far as the cost of raising real food. As you're thinking about maybe making money on your homestead, on your farmstead, don't sell yourself short. Um, and if it doesn't make sense, if you if you cannot sell something for um, the value that you've invested in it then at least where I'm landing right now is maybe I just need to do something else and uh, so I, honestly right now I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to offer up chickens for sale um, because right now honestly the price that I feel like I should charge for the value of the product that I'm providing is something that I'm not sure many people are going to be willing to pay um, and so I may throw it out there I may not um, we'll see I haven't quite made up my mind um, but what I have made up my mind is that what we're doing is important um, it's at least important to me it's important to my family and uh, and it has value and there is a real cost to raising real food and I think a lot of times people have this romantic idea about um, you know cows out on pasture, sheep frolicking in meadows, you know, pigs grazing in woodlots, chickens uh, having plenty of grass and, and just being able to free range and all of those kinds of things. It's a very romantic idea. But uh, when it comes to paying for that idea, either financially or the commitment that it takes to make those ideas come to fruition, I'm not sure many people actually value the real cost of raising real food. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Thank you so much again for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, um, and until next time, keep raising the real food and uh, remember what you're doing has value. Thanks everybody.